Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, on today's show, we're going to take a look at some of the biggest talking points coming out of Titans organized team activities. First, we got to talk about the offensive line. And if Dylan Radins is at tackle, what does that mean for the rest of the starting five man unit? And then, We got to talk about the way that the secondary is being deployed. Who's going to be the three dime safeties? Who are going to be the three starting cornerbacks? We'll talk about all of that and what undrafted free agents really caught my eye and have a chance to make the 53-man roster. We'll talk about all of that and more on this week-ending edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it! You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, we are going to cap off the week here on the Locked On Titans podcast. Just kind of rounding up some of the biggest talking points that have come out of Titans OTAs. Number one, we're going to talk about the offensive line, the starting group, what that could look like. Number two, we are going to talk about the secondary and how the Titans defensive secondary will be deployed and who fills which roles. And then we're going to talk about some undrafted free agents who I think have a real chance to make the roster. Before we get into that, I do want to tell you guys that today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moment sparkle with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com and locked on listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings. Use code locked on at checkout at BlueNile.com. Also, want to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast. Your first listen every day. If this is your first ever listen to the Locked On Titans podcast, make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. You're going to find the Locked On Titans podcast everywhere and always free. I'm putting out daily Monday through Friday Tennessee Titans content all year long, including on the Locked On Titans YouTube channel. Subscribe over there, smash that notification bell, and throw a thumbs up on the video. If you're watching right now, you can follow me on Twitter at Tic Tac Titans on Facebook at Locked On Titans Pod. But again, the number one thing coming out of OTAs for me right now with the Titans is the offensive line battle. That's where most of the uncertainty actually lies with this roster right now. Now, we started to get a little bit of a, a clarity, a little bit of clarity from Mike Vrabel over the week of OTAs when he said that Dylan Radens is primarily working at right tackle. But guys, the way I view this, it's like we're playing offensive line wordle here for the Titans. We got a green block with Taylor Lewan. We got a green block with Ben Jones. We got a green block with Nate Davis at right guard. So we got three letters in this offensive line wordle. We know those spots. But that leaves right tackle. That leaves left guard. Now, According to my investigative eye from that video from the Titans with Traylon Burks catch from Ryan Tannehill last week, about a week ago, Aaron Brewer was at left guard. So that's what we expected. Let's assume Aaron Brewer is battling it out at left guard. Then you got to remember Mike Vrabel's comments from earlier in the offseason about Jamarco Jones, where they said that they're going to primarily work Jamarco Jones at first at left guard. So that means that Jamarco Jones and Aaron Brewer are battling it out for left guard. And then you look at right tackle. If Dylan Radins is primarily working at right tackle, that's great. But Nicholas Petit Ferrer from Ohio State, the rookie, pick number 69, nice. They could be battling it out at right tackle. Now, I also think that Jamarco Jones is getting reps at right tackle. I believe that. I think the versatility that he offers, they want him to be ready to play both. Because even if Jermarco Jones doesn't start for the Titans on the offensive line, he's going to be the primary backup, most likely at left guard and right tackle. With Nicholas petit Ferrer, in my opinion, being a year away. But I do want to say, how crazy would it be if NPF started at right tackle? I think that it, it's a long shot, 
I think that would be crazy. But if Jamarco Jones is truly getting more work at left guard than he is at right tackle, then that should give Petit Ferrer a, a leg up advantage to win that spot. And if Dylan Radins is, you know, we've all wanted to know where's Dylan Radins going to play. If Dylan Radins just isn't living up to what they'd hoped he'd be, then there is a real chance that Nicholas Petit Ferrer could start. But I got to tell you guys, right now, Aaron Brewer at left guard, Jamarco Jones at right tackle, kind of seems realistic to me. It's not what I want. It's not what I'm hoping for. What I am hoping for is Aaron Brewer at left guard and then Dylan Raylands at right tackle to go along with the three green world blocks that we already have. That is what I am going to be hoping for, and that is what we need to be watching uh, through the last few OTAs that take place this week coming up and into training camp. The offensive line is the big question, the big mystery, and I'll continue monitoring it, seeing what happens there, and kind of talking through what is really going on. Now, before we move into talking about the Titans secondary, I do want to tell you guys a little bit more about today's title sponsor, Blue Nile. At BlueNile.com, you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece, all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Build the engagement ring of her dreams or celebrate life's special moments with fine jewelry. No matter what you're looking for, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand to help you 24-7. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And locked on listeners, get $50 off purchases of $500 or more when you use the podcast exclusive promo code Locked On. And that code even works for engagement rings. That's promo code Locked On Plus. Every order from BlueNile.com is insured, it ships for free, and it arrives in discreet packaging so they won't know what you've got for them. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. Titans fans, we are going to continue this week-ending edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. We just talked about the offensive line. We're going to continue getting into some of these uh, big talking points coming out of Titans OTAs. Before we get into the secondary and how they may be deployed, I do want to ask you guys a big favor. We put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked on podcast, including this one, even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On Podcasts. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes the survey can qualify for a chance to win one of $1,000 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Thank you all for your help, and also thank you for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. But let's dive into this conversation about the Titans secondary. So, all indications are that Caleb Farley, he's been, I mean, the praise has been effusive for Caleb Farley all over the map from Back in February, felt like Mike Vrabel at the Combine was talking about Caleb Farley and his body maturation, how different he looks as a player. We've heard John Robinson talk about it. We heard Shane Bowen talk about Caleb Farley and Mike Vrabel talk about Caleb Farley on Wednesday. So everybody in the organization seems to be just heaping praise on Caleb Farley. And that is just great news for us to hear. Caleb Farley, and I'll get into my X-Factor players for the Titans later in the offseason. But Caleb Farley is one of the biggest X-Factor players for the Titans. If Caleb Farley is bad, that'll set the Titans' defense back because he'll be worse than Jackrabbit Jenkins was last year. But if Caleb Farley is good, if Caleb Farley plays up to his potential, 
The Titans defense goes to top five, hands down. I mean, Farley at six foot two with his size and his speed and his athleticism. I mean, what a nightmare for teams to deal with. And think about what it sets up for the secondary. And this will allow us to get into this conversation. Think about going up against the Colts. Got Michael Pittman, 6'4", 6'5", big body receiver. Boom. Caleb Farley. There's your matchup. I mean, there's your matchup. Your quicker, faster guys who play on the outside, you got Christian Fulton. Brandon Cooks, when the Titans, the Titans play the Texans, you got Brandon Cooks. You got Nico Collins, Caleb Farley on the big body Nico Collins, Christian Fulton on Brandon Cooks. I mean, I love those, Matt. I love those. And then, of course, the starting slot cornerback is going to be Elijah Molden. The slot Jedi. Going to be in there. But this is where the conversation goes. It's all about deployment. The Titans did all kinds of different stuff with their deployment in the secondary last year. They'd have Jack Rabbit, Christian Fulton, and Elijah Molden out there on early downs, on first and second down, run situations. If it was a second and long, or if it was a third down, they'd take Elijah Molden off the field, and they'd put on Buster Screen, who is more adept to play man coverage, which the Titans love man coverage. Molden is not a great man coverage player, and I don't think he'll ever be, quite frankly. At least against slot wide receivers. We'll get to that in a second. So when you look at that deployment, who could be coming in to take that buster screen roll on third downs as the slot corner? Well, obviously, it could be buster screen himself, who's been brought back by the Titans. And I think that's insurance for Roger McCreary. I think McCreary could be that guy. This year. I like that they brought back Buster Screen as that insurance policy. And the veteran may be out there early in the season. But I do believe that by the end of the year, that third down slot cornerback role will be Roger McCreary. And even if it's not in 2022, it's going to be in 2023. That's the vibes, folks. That's why McCreary was brought on. So... If that's how the safety situation is, then we or the cornerback situation is, then we look at safety. Kevin Byer, Damani Hooker, and I know that Amani Hooker in OTAs played some tight end stopper. I don't think that was a dime safety. It was just him playing man because Hooker is at his best in the back end, being that deep free safety. Guys, you want to know if somebody knows the Titans? Ask them who's strong safety and the free safety are. Do it. And see what they say. Because conventional wisdom, and if you're looking at like Madden positions, they're going to tell you Kevin Byard is the free safety and Amani Hooker is the strong safety. But if you look at the way the Titans deploy their safeties, Amani Hooker spends more time in the back end as the deep safety than Kevin Byard does. Really, the Titans like to use the safeties inter- interchangeably. But Amani Hooker is great at the back end covering things deep. And Kevin Byard is better as that robber defender over the middle of the field in zone coverage, reading the quarterback size, making plays over the middle of the field. So you allow them to do that. And if that happens and that continues, then who is going to be the third safety? So let's talk about dime. Let's talk about when the Titans deploy six defensive backs. They're going to play man coverage is what they like. Imagine Farley and Fulton on the outsides, uh, Roger McCreary on the inside, or a buster screen. Then they're going to have Kevin Byard playing that robber zone defender over the middle intermediate, and then Amani Hooker playing the zone defender deep. And then they need one more man coverage guy. And this is where the conversation comes to. Will it be Elijah Molden, who I think should be the favorite to do that role as the tight end stopper? The Dane Crookshank role. Will it be Theo Jackson? Will the Titans bring Kevin Byard or Armani Hooker in and then have a guy like maybe Michael Griffin the second play that role? Now, for me, some people are talking about Michael Griffin potentially being that deep safety to allow Armani Hooker or Kevin Byard to come up and play some man. I don't get it. Michael Griffin out of San Diego State University, uh, six foot, 215 pounds. He's a physical guy who can play up 
in the box and maybe some dime linebacker. I see Michael Griffin, although he had a, a, a nine plus relative athletic score, which is really high out of 10. The film just doesn't match that. It doesn't translate. The speed doesn't translate. Michael Griffin II is not an incredibly fast guy. He's more of a quick guy, guy you want coming downhill, playing physical and run defense. So to me, he's another Theo Jackson candidate, not somebody who can play deep. So for me, Fulton and Farley on the outsides, Elijah Molden as the slot corner on early downs, bring in Roger McCreary or Buster Screen on passing downs for the slot, move Elijah Molden over to the tight end stopper or the dime linebacker, and then leave Kevin Byard and Imani Hooker doing what they do best. That's the secondary shakedown for me. But we're going to move forward. I want to talk about some undrafted free agents who I think really have a shot to carve out a role with the Titans. Before we get into that, do want to tell you guys about BetOnline.net. BetOnline is your number one source for all your sporting wagering information, all the latest odds, props, and lines. Make sure you go to BetOnline.net right now for their new and improved updated website. You can see all the different things they have available, get all the latest information and all the trends and all the action. Bet online where the game starts. Titans fans, we are going to cap off this week of the Locked On Titans podcast talking some undrafted free agents who I think have a real, real chance to carve out a role on the 53-man roster. Before we get into those, do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first to listen every day. As for your second listen, make sure you guys check out the Locked On NFL podcast. You get all your Titans news here with me in under 30 minutes every day. Combine that with getting all of your national NFL news in under 30 minutes every single day with the Locked On NFL podcast. It's free and available on all platforms, just like Locked On Titans. And I actually host the Thursday show of the Locked On NFL podcast. So if you guys would subscribe over there, check that out. I would appreciate the support. But again, we talked about the offensive line. We talked about the secondary. Now I want to get into some of these undrafted free agents. And there's about 17 undrafted free agents that Titans signed. I have six of them. That I think realistically, realistically, and I'm going to go with seven. I'm going to go with seven. Realistically could carve out a role here. So, number one, Reggie Roberson from Baylor. Six foot, 200 pounds, explosive speed, good deep ball tracking as well. He would be the element to the offense that I want from Will Fuller, but he would be with a young guy. But here's the problem with Roberson. Injuries. Back-to-back season-ending injuries. I believe it was an ACL tear and then a, a broken foot. When he is healthy, not a really complex route tree, not really a yards-after-catch option. And the reality here is he didn't look healthy last year. He looked significantly worse than what we had seen earlier in his college career. Can he provide that speed threat for the Titans and stay healthy and get back to his old old form? I don't know. But what I do know is, if he does, I would take Roberson's skill set over Des Fitzpatrick, over Racy McMath, over Mason Kinsey, over Josh Malone, over Cody Hollister. I mean, he his speed truly provides something that the Titans do not have in their wide receiver group right now. So, again... All these guys have low likelihoods of making the roster, but if anybody could do it, I think Roberson is one of the guys that has a skill set that would fit and would give him a chance to carve out a role. And I guess there is some return ability there, but I'm looking at Trenton Cannon. I'm looking at Kyle Phillips. I think there are other guys who can return the ball for the Titans. Also, got to go to running back, Sacred Heart, Julius Chestnut. We're all hype about Hassan Haskins because he can back up Derrick Henry in that power back role. But Julius Chestnut was one of the more productive players in college football, even at a lower level. Crazy size, 6'1", 215, so a big guy. He's versatile, too. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He really can. He runs with power, great vision, understanding of of setting up his blocks. But there are some medical concerns for Julius Chestnut that caused him to not be drafted. 
And he just doesn't have elite speed. He's one of those guys who does everything right that you need to do to play running back, but just doesn't have elite end traits. So if he beats out Hassan Haskins, though, he has a real chance to make the roster because the Titans need that backup power back to Derrick Henry. They can't just have Derrick Henry and then scat backs like Cannon and Dontrell Hilliard. They need someone to back up Henry. Also, we talked about the interior offensive line and how things are in flux. The best offensive lineman in NAIA history out of Culver Stockton, Andrew Ripsich. He was an offensive tackle in college, six foot seven, three oh five, but he's got short arms, some balance issues. A lot of people see him as an interior offensive lineman if he can make it at the NFL level because he does have good size. He's got really strong hands and he plays with good toughness. Again, there. He can't beat out Corey Levin. He can't beat out Daniel Murner. I see no reason why that can't happen. So I could see Andrew Ripsich finding a way to carve out a role. I really do. Also, Haskell Garrett from Ohio State, interior defensive line, six foot two, 300 pounds. He's a gap shooting, quick penetrator. He's got a, a big, bulky uh, build that allows him to kind of be a wrecking ball through gaps on the defensive line, that fits with the Titans scheme. And I don't think that guys like T.R. Tarr or Naquan Jones uh, or Kevin Strong are so good that Garrett can't break through there. Larell Murchison, I think, could be cut too, you know? So there's no reason that Haskell Garrett couldn't break through there out of Ohio State. I talked about Michael Griffin, the safety already. I do want to talk about David Anini out of Houston, Really good bend for an edge rusher. Got really good speed and good length. So kind of the physical tools are there. He's got the flexibility to bend. He's got speed. He's got good length. Not a very strong guy. Not very good holding up and run defense. Needs to work on his rush counters. Right now he's just a speed guy. But I like having back end of the roster guys. But you can kind of develop and cultivate the technicalities of the position, give me the edge rusher with length, speed, and bend, and I'll coach him up. Because it's just so hard to be a professional edge rusher if you don't have those top-tier athletic traits and you ham and egg it all the time. It's just tough to do it. So I like taking a chance on a guy like an any to do that. I think that could make a ton of sense. And also, we got to mention Caleb Shudek, the kicker out of Iowa. Apparently, he's been neck and neck with Randy Bullock. And... Although I like Randy Bullock and I championed Randy Bullock last year. Bulletproof Bullock, baby. I still think that if you get a young guy who's just as good with more potential and they could be around longer, you got to give that a look. So Caleb Shudek, the kicker out of Iowa, he's been lighting it up in camp, man. He's got a real, real chance to make this roster. But that is the offensive line conversation, the secondary deployment conversation, and the undrafted free agents I think have a really, really good chance to carve out a role on the roster, I guess we'll say the best chance of any of the undrafted free agents. But that's going to do it for me today, folks. That's going to do it for me this week. I'll be back with you guys next week to continue giving you Monday through Friday daily free Tennessee Titans content. I hope you all have a great weekend. That's going to do it for me today, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.